Hi there, and welcome back to the CML video series, or if this is your first time, welcome to our Cisco Modeling Labs or CML video series. In this episode, we are going to look at the new features in CML 2.4. Um, what we're looking at here is the login for CML 2.4, and you know that we're running 2.4 because you can see the version here. So this is the first 2.4 um, uh, general release, 2.4.0 build 3. I'm going to go ahead and get logged in here. And initially, it doesn't look all that different. If you're familiar with previous versions of CML, you see your lab tiles. It doesn't look any different. But the big feature, the biggest feature in CML 2.4 is this notion of clustering. This is something that our uh, larger enterprise and education customers have been asking for for a long time. Because prior to CML 2.4 and all previous versions of CML 2, the only way to run either more labs at one time or in, or in order to run a lot of nodes, you needed to build a really big server. Lots of CPUs, lots of cores, lots of sockets, lots of memory, the gobs of gig, so to speak. And really, there was only so big of a server you could build. Uh, and at some point, you just, you, if you wanted to run, say, a lot of XR 9KV nodes, you just tapped out couldn't build a server that big. So now in CML 2.4, we have this notion of horizontal scalability. That means instead of just one server, I can bring as many servers as I want within reason, so let's say 16 servers to the party, connect them all on a, an intra-cluster network, so a dedicated uh, network, and then I can manage them through this one interface, but my nodes are then running, my virtual network elements are running on those multiple servers. And that way I can scale to much larger uh, labs or I can have many labs running at one time with, with many nodes. Um, in my cluster, and what we're going to look at today, I've got three nodes. I've got a controller, which this is the controller the main that has the main interface we'll use to uh, manage and talk to CML. And then I've got two compute nodes. This cluster is set up so that the controller doesn't run any virtual network elements. However, you can set it up so that the controller is the controller and it can run virtual network elements. But in my case, I've got the controller dedicated to controller stuff, and I've got two compute nodes that run the virtual network elements. Mine happen to be all running in VMware ESXi. However, you can mix and match bare metal with VMware-based or virtual machine-based um, nodes within your cluster. Um, just be aware that you need the, a, a dedicated network, a layer two network between all of the nodes. So let's go ahead and look at this uh, lab I've got running here, my Ansible playground. I click on it and maybe you notice one or two things a little bit different. We'll, we'll look at some of the other changes in a second. Uh, but the big thing I want to draw your attention to is even though this looks like a nice connected lab, like it always would in, in previous versions of CML. This is actually, these nodes are actually running on multiple CML servers. And how would you know that? Well, let's click the nodes tab here and you can get a picture of where these, we can, we can look at where these nodes are running. So you can see that router one up here is running on um, compute one as well as the, the core switch is also running on compute one. And this Ansible host one down at the bottom is running on compute two. So even though they're, they're, it looks like it's a, a connected network just like before, they're running on different compute elements. Now, I said that my controller is not running any virtual network elements, but you can see here there are two things, two nodes running on the controller. Well, these aren't really virtual network elements. Uh, uh, the management switch here is just an unmanaged switch, so it's a Linux bridge. And the management cloud is my external connector. That's just my connection to the external world. The controller will always run all unmanaged switches, and it will always run all external connectors. So it's the thing that's doing that just basic bridging. This is nice because this means that I only have to connect the controller to the outside world. I don't have to connect any other um, of my... Uh, uh, compute nodes in my cluster to the outside world um, because that just simplifies things when I'm when I'm connecting up my network. So you can see here I've got multiple uh, devices running across multiple computes, but let's take a look. I can connect to the console of my core switch here. 
So there's my core switch. Um, and I've got, a, if I look at show IP and brief, I've got an IP address on gigabit ethernet zero zero. That's my, um, uh, that's my management interface. In fact, if I look at the config on that, you can see I've got a VRF I've assigned of management. So that means I can do ping VRF management, uh, the default gateway for, um, uh, for this network. And yes, I can ping it. Traffic-wise or flow-wise, what's happening here is even though um, SW Core, as we said, was running on Compute One, the traffic is flowing out of Compute One over that that dedicated intracluster network, flowing over to the controller where the unmanaged switch, the management switch, is, and it's being uh, bridged and terminated there out to the uh, the world where my uh, where my default gateway actually lives in the in the external space. So that is how uh, traffic flow is going to happen in a clustered environment. Clustering is only available to uh, uh, CML Enterprise and CML Education customers. So it's a, it's a larger uh, feature as part of those releases. But some of the things that are available in uh, CML uh, for all users, including personal and personal plus, is this new notion of filtering. So while we're here at the... Uh, a node screen, let's take a look. Let's say I had a lot of computes. I had, let's say I had five compute nodes in my, um, in my setup and a lot of node, a lot of virtual network elements running. And I wanted just to filter on things running on compute node one. I can click on this new filter icon and each of the, uh, or most of the, the column headers have an icon for that. And then I can select from the values. So in this case, I'm only interested in what's running on compute node one. I click that and then I can filter that out. And so this filtering will apply here and other uh, areas where you encounter tabular uh, lists of data. So it becomes very nice to be able to drill into and find what you're looking for. Of course, you can also do the search, but the filtering does make it very nice. So that's available to all users. The other thing that I want to call your attention to is something that, that's been requested, and I've even had a video showing you how you can do uh, link testing or, or, or link up-down testing um, with, uh, with devices. We've simplified that in CML24. So you notice that each one of these links now has a, a little green icon on either end of the link on the, representing the interfaces. And you know, green good, that means that the interfaces are up, they're running. But let's say we wanted to simulate a bi-directional link failure over here between our Ansible host and our core switch. So the way we do that, uh, first of all, let me just make sure I'm logged in on both of these devices. Yeah, look to be logged in there, and I'm still logged in on my switch. So I'll click the link, and I want to do a bi-directional link failure. I want both sides of this link to go down at once. So I'll go to the Simulate tab on the link, and you see there's now a new Disconnect button. Well, the disconnect button uh, will allow me to simulate that. We don't want to use stop here. We're going to use disconnect. It'll simulate a link failure on both sides, so like the cables just being unplugged from both sides. So let's take a look. First of all, I'll just go here to Linux, do an IP link show. You can see the ENS3, which is that, uh, is up. It's up, lower, up. And if I come over here and I do a show in... Uh, show IP and brief, or just look at it that way, that Gigabit Ethernet 2 is up, up, okay? So click back on the link, we'll click the disconnect button, and we'll go quickly back over here on the console of our core switch, and you can see that the interface Gigabit Ethernet 02 goes down. Now, over on our Linux host, if I do an IP link show again, you can see now that I'm no carrier, so I, I don't have carrier, so I've simulated that link failure on both sides. And likewise, if I click back and click the connect button, now that it's disconnected, you can see that the icons went from uh, gray, meaning disconnected, back to green. Come back over here to the console. You can see that the interface changed state to up. If I do a show IP and brief again. I see it up, up. And back on my Linux side, if I do an IP link show, I don't have the no carrier. The link is, is being uh, back up. So over here, we had no carrier and we lost the lower up. Uh, the lower layer up, but here we have everything back up again. Now, 
Before, in order to do a bidirectional link failure, we had to shut down or disconnect, so to speak, stop each interface individually. And because we don't like to take away something that was working, because maybe you just want to do a unidirectional link failure, that still works. So see here, we've got uh, uh, lower up, we've got no, we've got carrier, everything looks good. But let's say we wanted just to take down the core switch side. So here I'll click on the core switch. I'll go to the interfaces tab. I'll select the interface I care about. So gigabit ethernet two, so I'll click on that. And then I'll click on the simulate tab here. And here I'll click the stop button. So once I click the stop button, you see that only the core switch side went from green to gray. If I go back on the console, you'll see in a second or two, I get the uh, link down message. Oh, there we are. Sorry, I was scrolled up. So you can see a link down, and if I do a show IP in brief, you can see that it's down, down. However, on the Linux side, on the Linux side, I still have the green icon, and if I do an IP link show, I still have lower up, and I don't see the no carrier. So again, to bring it back up, click on the, the node, click on interfaces, the interface name start. You can see it went back to green. I come back over here to the console, the switch, we see it comes back up and show IP and brief works. So that's a way now in, a, in one click to simulate that bidirectional link failure, while at the same time, you still have the ability to do the unidirectional link failures if you want. So the three main features we looked at uh, here for CML24 was that uh, ability to do clustering, the ability to do horizontal scalability for enterprise and education and really expand the capacity of what you can run within CML. Uh, we have the ability of doing uh, filtering uh, on some of the tabular data uh, outputs, so it's easy to find the data you're looking for. Turn that on and off very easily. And we have the ability of doing uh, one-click bidirectional link failure and still doing the same unidirectional link failure we could before for being able to simulate all of those scenarios you might want to do uh, connectivity-wise within CML. So that's it for this episode. Uh, next time we'll be back, we'll probably look at packet capture in, in Cisco Modeling Labs. Thanks for tuning in.